everyone. for the very first time so i'm just going to give maybe another couple of minutes before we start introduce myself so i am dr adi pratyusha a consultant child and adolescent psychiatrist at continental hospitals hyderabad so today we are here addressing a very important topic which is most often ignored obviously it's mental health but it's related to someone who play a very important role in our lives our fathers our brothers our husbands our children our friends so basically all the men in our life So today we are going to discuss about mental health in men, which is often ignored and mostly not talked about, right? So uh, I'll tell you a fun fact um, about this November and um, men's health. So I'm not sure how many of you all are aware, but um, there's a movement, a global movement called Movember. Okay, so it was started in 2003. Uh, it's basically nothing but men growing their moustaches. it was started as a movement to create awareness about men uh, about men's health so it's about the prostate cancer about the testicular cancer and also about the men's mental health and this was added up by uh, another movement of 2009 which is the no shave november which is pretty famous so all of these things are basically to prioritize about uh, men's health that includes mental health as a part of physical health as well so uh, to go by statistics you know approximately in india four out of 10 men suffer from some kind of mental illness and uh, a, a survey which has been conducted in 2021 showed that the suicides in men were approximately 72.5% in contrast to women which is which was only 27.5% so you see there was a drastic difference between the suicides in men and women and this uh, included all age groups of 18 to 59 this shows that there is this alarming problem with mental health related to men which nobody wants to talk about and uh, i think it's time we prioritized it and started talking about it so what are the factors that usually interfere in this you know um, that cause 
uh, individuals to go under stress, especially the men. And what are the factors that interfere in them coming out and talking to us? One, the primary and the most important thing is stigma, obviously. The word mental health is associated with so much of a taboo that it has created a lot of stigma around it. People don't, and the stigma, it can be social stigma, as in where they think what people perceive of them, you know, a sense, they feel like, you know, people are gonna think they are, they are broken or they're not good enough and all of these things. So because of these social factors, people don't come up and talk, the stigma. The other stigma is the self. Where, you know, people think like if I accept I'm having some kind of a mental illness, maybe I'm not good enough, maybe they consider it to be a part of shame and that stops them from coming out and seeking help. So stigma is a one big important factor that stops these individuals from reaching out. The second thing is the societal norms of masculinity. You know, in the patriarchal society, we've always discussed about how it is unfair for women, but I think it is also unfair for men. Because we have created so much of burden on them saying that, you know, like men embody strength or, you know, emotional stoicism or resilience. We always expect them to be like autonomous, assertive, and we, we don't usually give them a chance to be emotional. So all of these things are causing a kind of refrainment for them to kind of show out their emotional side or be emotionally open. You know how we say when children cry, like, you know, men don't cry or men are brave. These are the tiny statements or sentences that we use uh, to children when, when, when the brain is developing, or when the confidence is developing, when the morale is developing, that makes them to internalize that, okay, if I cry, then I'm considered weak. If I am not brave enough, I'm not considered good. These are some things that will add on to the stress for these individuals. The third thing is the uh, cultural uh, expectations. You know, still men are considered providers and protectors. They are still the primary breadwinners of the family. So the constant thing of being under work, being under stress is creating a lot of pressure for them. You know, they always associate work with a sense of control or, you know, a competency or success. These are the things that they've made it synonymous that they try striving for more and they ignore the pressures that come along the way. And this leads to burnout. So burnout, again, is slightly different in men and women. In women, if we see, it comes most likely as an exhaustion. Whereas in men, it comes more like a cynicism. With these individuals, uh, they think they are unproductive. And unproductive, they start thinking that they are incompetent. And from incompetency, they feel inadequacy that later affects their self-confidence, their self-worth, and then pessimism. And then from that, it starts percolating into the rest of their life that includes the relationships, the personal relationships and cause chaos there also. So we can see that one area of work, how it can kind of cause distress in the entire uh, life of one individual. Okay, the other one is the physiological differences between men and women. See, we are, we are made different, both biologically, the hormonally, okay. So men operate uh, mostly, like they have a high testosterone levels. So they operate predominantly in a fight or flight mode where they have high cortisol and adrenaline. Whereas women, they're more like tend and befriend kind of a thing where they have more oxytocin. They also have fight or flight, but predominantly oxytocin. So you see, they have, uh, they're more open emotionally. They have high emotional quotient and they usually prefer to discuss or have or have open conversations. Whereas men, usually they prefer more like a problem focused approach. They're more logical uh, than emotional. So when a problem comes, they usually try to find a solution to it or kind of, you know, shut it down and not address it and kind of focus more on work or keep themselves distracted. So these are the things which again, put a lot of pressure on men, uh, causing them to be susceptible to a lot of these mental health issues. Um, the other thing is the poor coping mechanisms that these men have. See, unfortunately, um, you know, these individuals either they kind of you know, internalize the struggle, they internalize the pain, they shut out people, they don't really talk, they're not vocal about their feelings. And all of these things results in kind of you know, estrangement, detachment, kind of diverting and distracting themselves into work and all of that. Or sometimes they may externalize that and they may become very aggressive, arrogant, or kind of indulge in a lot of substances like alcohol, smoking, marijuana, or risk taking behaviors, all of these things further, which will add to the stress to the mental health. So these could be possible reasons why uh, these individuals uh, might be having uh, difficulty um, uh, with mental health, okay? So what are the kind of challenges that we see in this men? So pretty much the mental health issues in men and women are almost same, just that the presentation might be slightly different. As in, for example, the depression in men, uh, we don't really expect them to kind of, you know, sit in a corner and start crying or, you know, uh, kind of 
of uh, lazing all day so rather than seeing low mood and crying spells we see the other way which is more like you know um, aggressive mood irritable and uh, again going to substance abuse and all of those things and anxiety phobias and generalized anxiety they are also pretty common in men but they don't really come out and talk about it because they think they'll be looked down upon especially in the professional setting if they have some kind of a social anxiety they think they'll be kind of ostracized and not be included or that might affect their performance or career growth uh, then ptsds bpads are also pretty common in men another most common uh, thing which we usually see in men are substance use disorders so see it's more like a tip of the iceberg we see the substance use at the tip there but there's a lot going underneath you know a, a depression can result in externalizing behavior aggression leading to a lot of substance use anxiety in order to cover up the anxiety they might end up in substance use to overcome their loneliness to overcome the stress they might end up drinking a lot of alcohol so you see we see substance as just a tip here but there's a lot going underneath that could probably be contributing to their mental health issues um another interesting fact here the neurodevelopmental disorders that is the disorders which we see during the development like adhd that is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or sld which is um your know, specific learning disabilities these are the things which are seen more commonly in boys than in girls so genetic susceptibility is something that plays a role here unfortunately most of these cases they go unrecognized and they end up continuing into adolescence later into adulthood and then when the person is working or in the office setup they start to realize that their attention span is low or the concentration is low that impairs their performance which further leads to anxiety and depression same thing with learning disorder you know when they have issues with reading or with writing or with mathematics and all of that if it is skipped during the childhood that might later kind of you know uh, show up during adulthood but impairs with their performance and that later leading to secondary psychiatric mental health conditions so these are the most common things which we see just that the presentation is different so what is that we can do see the good news is mental health disorders are all treatable conditions okay it is not like um, there's no treatment for it or you have to suffer with it uh, for the uh, for the rest of your life but the only thing which is important is here is that you need to break the silence and ask for help that is the first step that you'll have to do so all the men listening out here i would like to say you know it's okay to not be okay and you don't have to suffer in silence asking for help or seeking help doesn't mean that you are weak rather it is the strongest measure anybody can take for oneself you know by in embracing their vulnerabilities so i think it's time people started talking about it so how we as a society can help them is one you know you can be more vocal about this creating a safe environment where you know people can come and have conversations where they can come and kind of express themselves without having the fear of being judged then to encourage them to seek help you know you, most of the times when someone comes and says i'm feeling low i don't think anybody gives an advice like yeah you need to go and seek a professional help it's most likely like you know no go out for a movie go out for a walk you'd be okay no it wouldn't you wouldn't give the same advice to someone who broke a limb or who's having some kind of you know a chest pain you wouldn't be like you know go out for a movie and your pain would subside or go out for a catch up with your friends and your leg would heal by itself then why do that with mental health just because it's not visible doesn't mean that it is not there So I think people need to kind of prioritize that as well. So encourage them to seek help also, and two, you need to prioritize yourself. Self care is something which is more important. You can start doing that by ha- including some healthy habits, like having a healthy lifestyle, like some exercises, having the clean and uh, healthy food, and including hobbies into your daily routine. Having a good work life balance, all of these things will help in achieving uh, a good uh, healthy life. And other thing is one. breaking the norms breaking the societal norms the the challenge challenging the stereotypes especially the masculine stereotypes saying that crying or kind of being uh, expressing the vulnerabilities is weak or you know not being strong enough i think it's time we kind of broke that as well so anyone knows if you or any of any of the ones you know are struggling from some kind of mental health issues i don't think you have to suffer in silence it's time you could seek out for help here we at continental hospitals are ready to support you with compassionate care and expert guidance all you have to do is just reach out to us and you have the help at your hand so i think that was from my side so i would like to take some questions if there are any
So any questions from the audience? I would love to listen. I think the most important thing um, here for us to promote mental health in men or in general for anyone is one, seeing mental health from a genderless lens. I don't think we have to, you know, put into a gender and see from that point of view, like, you know, uh, only men should do this or only women should do this. Yes, I'm seeing some question here. Um, how to deal with anxiety and stress? Yeah, so see, this is a day-to-day -day thing which we see uh, in our lives, uh, anxiety and stress. A very small uh, thing can kind of you know, trigger it off where you start feeling anxious all through the day. So one is trying to keep your stress at minimum. I know that's a pretty general thing which everyone says. Maybe try incorporating a little bit of mindfulness into your routine. So mindfulness is nothing but being in the present. You see, most of the times we are either thinking about something that happened in the past or we are constantly worried about something that's happening in the future. So mindfulness is nothing but staying in the present, being in the present. So for example, if you can start off with a small movements, like maybe if you're sipping a cup of coffee, all you have to do is just, just stay there sipping the coffee, you, you enjoy the smell, the aroma, the taste, how it feels and just being present in the moment. So this is mindfulness. You can include some kind of breathing exercises. You can start journaling. You know, journaling helps you to kind of be aware of your emotions. It increases that self-awareness and also it helps you to reach out to people when you're not feeling okay and having a good hobbies, anything extracurricular other than just your work. I think that also helps in uh, combating stress and anxiety. Uh, yeah, I can see a question. Mental stress can cause cancer. No, uh, not really. Mental stress can't cause cancer. But uh, unfortunately, stress can activate a lot of the other systems in your body. Like for example, stress and inflammation. Most of the autoimmune conditions that you see are triggered by stress. So it can result in a lot of different conditions, autoimmune conditions and all of that. And uh, it can worsen your prognosis if you're already having a cancer, but directly it can't cause a cancer. Yeah, so another question, how can society work to reduce the stigma surrounding men seeking mental health support? Yeah, so like I said, so probably one is by rewriting the societal norms. I think, you know, we need to create an environment which is encouraging, which is more open, which is non-judgmental. And when someone comes out to discuss the problems rather than, you know, if you're at a place where we really can't offer any support or help, we can always encourage them to seek help. Um, but if there's something that we can do, we can always... Uh, you know, be a listening ear and kind of uh, give a shoulder to lean on so that they feel a little supported. Creating a good peer support or support system in general might be helpful uh, for any individual suffering from mental illness and silence. How to check for uh, symptoms in men's depression? So uh, the depressive symptoms in men are slightly different from that of uh, women. It's just that, you know, see, um, when we say depression, everyone thinks like, you know, they're just crying, they're just sulking and uh, they're not doing anything and all of these things. But no, it can be different as well. So irritable mood can be one of a primary uh, presenting complaint in men where they're constantly irritated, aggressive or kind of a small thing kind of, you know, tips them off. Um, they're having poor attention and concentration at work. They're not, real to, uh, they're not really able to push themselves at work or not able to achieve greatly at work. So, or disturbance in your sleep, disturbance in your appetite, or you're seeing like, you know, the previously the things which would kind of, you know, interest you, excite you, don't excite you anymore. So these are some of the symptoms uh, that can be seen in men uh, with depression. Um, so yeah, bipolar disorder. Okay, so bipolar disorder is a type of uh, mood disorder. Uh, just that like how we talk about depression. So if in bipolar, there's, there are like two poles, okay? At one end, if it is depression, the other end is mania, okay? So it doesn't happen to everyone. It predominantly depends on a genetic susceptibility of that individual and the gen genetic nature of that person. So some individuals who might first experience depression and then uh, you, you see that the depression has come down and what they're noticing is mania. So what happens is mania is, for example, this is your normal mood. Um, so depression, we everyone knows, it's, it's somewhere down here. Okay, there's low mood, there's loss of energy, there's no interest and all of that. Whereas mania is the, quite the contrast. It is on the upper side here. So they will have high energy. They will be very grandiose. They would want to do everything and anything. There will be excessive spending of money. They would talk to people whom even they are unfamiliar with as if they are very familiar. They might be aggressive and difficult to manage. So in any individual, if they have symptoms of mania 
and symptoms of depression individually as two different episodes we called as a bipolar disorder and um, when compared to men and women men are more susceptible for bipolar disorder when compared to women and that's why we are discussing this today because it is important so yeah prioritize your mental health daily like we've discussed um you know about uh, journaling being more emotionally aware having a good work life balance being mindful some healthy exercises healthy diet and having a good sleep routine all of these things will help them so bipolar disorder when you see that somebody is having a bipolar disorder the first thing would be obviously it cannot be managed at a home um they will uh, they will need a uh, psychiatric intervention here they will need medicines here so they'll have to be brought to the hospital and individual will be put on based on if it is a depressive episode or a manic episode treatment will be directed accordingly like if it is a depressive episode with a cover of mood stabilizers uh, we can put antidepressants the same thing with a uh, manic episode so yeah they will be needing um, professional help uh, if it's a bipolar disorder so if you see someone there's a lot of change between their energy levels okay at some point they are low and at some point they are extremely high and they're happening at two different times and sometimes they are underproductive and sometimes they are overproductive and uh, sometimes uh, you know they feel like they can't do anything uh, or they can't achieve anything and sometimes where they feel they can achieve anything and everything um or being very grandiose about themselves so these are the these are the things which we should watch out um in individual for bipolar disorder so um special therapies and treatments for men's mental health okay there is they're not entirely different um like they're not like a set of completely different therapies but yes there are some different therapies like psychotherapies and pharmacotherapy medications that are uh, uh, required or mandated for these individuals so see first of all in psychiatry or uh, mental health there is nothing like a blanket treatment for everyone all of the treatments are individualized based on your uh, problems based on your responses based on what are the current scenarios that you are in what is the probable trigger what could probably be interfering or causing uh, the particular uh, health issue in you so it's always an individualized treatment rather than a blanket therapy that will be administered for anyone so yes there will be individualized treatments for men both from point of psychotherapies that is counseling point like individual counseling or some individuals might work well with group counselings where they feel feel the peer support um some cognitive behavioral therapy where they work with their thinking their feelings and their behaviors and a pharmacotherapy that is a medications might be mandated in some individuals so these are the different treatment options that are available for uh, these health conditions so uh, what are the challenges or how when should you be alarmed um uh, is one when you noticing that this change a change of mood in those individuals okay previously they were kind of good social and all of that and now you're seeing that they're being emotionally withdrawn or prefer to stay isolated not really talking much or even when you're talking they're kind of you know snapping or they are either uh, sleeping more or sleeping less or you have seen that they've increased in the amount of substance that they're taking like you know either alcohol or smoking or any other things like marijuana or something all of these things so you should be able to identify that you know there is something uh, wrong or there's something alarming about this individual and you can obviously offer them help as in would they want to talk out and would they want to like seek help and this is something you can um, help them through so you need to watch out for these behaviors which could probably be some signs that that individual is going through some kind of mental distress and that they will be needing help so how can family and friends support men in addressing their mental health challenges so you know family and friends play a very very important role uh, for any individual for that matter uh, to help in combating the mental health issues so one like i said being a very good support system it could be a peer support a family support creating a support system around you um, where you know that that support ecosystem is there wherein when you need a help you know whom to reach out and what would they do and with a completely non judgmental attitude they offer advice or or just be there to listen you don't really have to offer advice at all the times okay and a two a second thing is you know probably breaking the societal norms i mean why should we still carry the same patriarchal things that have been told to us that men can't be a certain way we need to rewrite those rules here rewrite the societal expectations and norms uh, saying that it's okay for men to cry it is okay for men to be low or feel fearful or feel anxious 
or not feel great all the time it doesn't always have to be that they have to be very strong and you know uh, even with the games if you see with children we always they always play rough and when they get injured or hurt we always say like no men don't cry or you you always do that no i think it's time we start rewriting those rules saying that men can be vulnerable too it's okay it is not a sign of weakness all of us are human all of us have emotions and all of us have a right to feel those emotions also just because somebody is being emotional or kind of you know not in the best phase doesn't mean that you are a failure so i think we as friends and family can support by changing the societal norms by rewriting them by creating a good future generation you know we can start at home we can just start at our home you just change one person at a time so we started a home started young and you see how these individuals grow up to be uh, more accepting more non judgmental and don't have to fit into that stereotype which we have created trying to push a man uh, into that corner that if you have to be a man you have to fit into all of these things i think it starts at home we all can be pretty supportive and start young at our homes so the most common uh, mental health issues faced by men is one a uh, depression uh, like we said that's one of the most common thing that can be seen and anxiety in anxiety is also we have different types okay it can be it could be a generalized anxiety but in this fear that something might happen or something is not really going good or something bad might happen to him or his family or a panic attack where the anxiety grows to such a level that the person ends up having a panic attack wherein you know um there might be symptoms wherein there's increased heart rate or breathlessness or they might be shivering they might be numbness some individuals most of the times they land up in an emergency department thinking they might be having some kind of a heart attack or a cardiac event so that's a panic attack and that can be really really scary it happens when uh, your sympathetic nervous system is overactive because of the constant stress and anxiety so that's another thing which is most commonly seen in men but um, less identified because most often they always think it is because of a cardiac event or it is because of something related to heart and nothing related to stress so uh, that's another thing then substance use disorders are again a most common thing so substance use disorders as in um anything with alcohol nicotine or any other substances psychoactive substances all of these things can also are more common in men because you know the they have this poor coping mechanism they usually try avoidance strategies they don't really try to confront their emotions uh, all they have to do is kind of shut it down and they kind of reach out to alcohol or other substances which are freely available which give that numbing effect so that they don't have to like handle their emotions and go through all of those things so substance use disorders are another common thing or sometimes they may end up in behavioral addictions which we are seeing now pretty common is either into gambling or you know video games or with the betting on all of those things that happening um so these are another way because they use it as a kind of distraction uh, from the ongoing stressors that keeps them engaged that gives them that dopamine hit to temporarily hold them their ground so these are some of the behaviors which we can see even ptsd is more common in uh, men especially if they've seen some kind of a traumatic incident it could be as basic like a death of a family member or it could be some accident but again they don't really reach out because i think the this lack of awareness in men the health literacy in men is comparatively less when compared to that of women so they don't really identify their emotional needs and they don't really come out and uh, you know reach out for help or seek things because they don't think it's a problem they don't really recognize that it's a problem that's where the that's where the issue comes because of that so yeah these are the most common conditions that we can see in men i mean ocd is another uh, thing which is seen more commonly in men tic disorders are again seen more commonly in men um these are all like more likely a genetically predisposed uh, things where men are more susceptible schizophrenia is another condition which is most commonly seen in men again because of their uh, genetic predisposition um and 20 to 40 is a usual age group that we can uh, see that also and um, yeah how can men balance societal expectations uh, with the need to care for their mental health yeah it's so the same like like when we say as a society we need to rewrite the norms i think men have to embrace that i think the first, like i said this change starts from self 
there's nothing wrong in prioritizing your own self like you are above everyone else i think that is the first thing which everyone needs to kind of absorb that it's you first and only then the rest of the world so you need to kind of embrace that and kind of be okay be more aware of yourself about your emotions your feelings and that will help in identifying for example if you're not feeling okay you don't have to like you know um be alone and sulk um and kind of you know not reach out you can it, it could just be a family it could just be a friend just call up and say that i'm not really doing okay is it fine you can go out is it fine if you can go and hang with uh, have a conversation you see most of the times i think it's women uh, who have i think the women friendships are also quite different from men friendships um wherein they're more open and ready to have conversations whereas we see in men they don't really uh, talk much especially about the deeper issues emotional issues something that's bothering them they kind of tend to joke about it and they kind of tend to trivialize it maybe that's the fear that has been instilled but yeah these are the things which kind of make them not to talk about the problems because of fear of being ridiculed or being trivialized or being picked upon called upon and all of those things so i think men need to kind of break out the of that stereotype and kind of try and fit in or create their own rules where they feel safe both emotionally see physical health and mental health i don't think we have to separate them Phys- uh, mental health is as important as physical health if not more so i think it's time we all started to prioritize it and kind of you know learn or take steps from there uh bipolar completely cured or not yes bipolar can be cured there is treatment available uh so with medications bipolar disorder can be cured um like i said all mental health conditions more or less can be cured they are all treatable conditions so there are medications that are available but unfortunately there is a lot of uh you know misconceptions around medicines uh thinking that they are very addictive or you know you might be taking them for the rest of your life and all of those things which are absolutely false i would like to break that myth today saying that you don't need to take psychiatric medicines like if you are initiated or you've been put on some medicines you don't have to take the medicines for the rest of your life no that is an absolutely false statement you will have to take definitely for some duration the doctor would decide the duration the dose and all of those things but eventually you will be taken off the medicines that's definitely going to happen and two none of these medicines are addictive okay there are only certain class of medicines which are addictive unfortunately none of the psychiatrists would prescribe them it's usually uh, non medicos or people who are lame and wouldn't know maybe they would do it but no so none of the medicines are also addictive as far as you're taking medicines under the guidance of the doctor you would not be experience any side effects or any untoward effects it's going to be pretty safe and you yourself would see the improvement so i think all the conditions are treatable and i i don't think you should hesitate in taking a step forward and uh, reaching out for help or taking the treatment being advised because this is another thing which most of the patients uh, kind of report of they are very skeptical about taking medications they know they've been suffering they know they have this problem but they chose not to come just because of the fear that they'll be put on medicines and that this medicines might they might require it for the rest of their life or that it is pretty addictive and that it will lead to a lot of other health issues no it's an absolutely um, misinformation misconception among people it is not like that and it's not that every individual will need medicines also some individuals only therapy might be good only counseling might help them in some individual only medicines might help them some individuals might need a combination of both medicines and therapy like i said it will be an individualized treatment based on your concerns your problems your issues so it's not like one size fits all and we are not trying to like you know compress an individual into that saying that you have to like fit into this so it's going to be individual for all of us uh so from you suffering from phobias yes definitely definitely we can get out of the phobia see again phobia is another uh, topic wherein anxiety is there in phobias again we see a lot of different types of phobias few individual have this agoraphobia like you know they are scared of going out in public um they panic when they see a lot of crowd some of them the claustrophobia we say like you know they're scared of closed spaces they feel like you know they might suffocate and they might end up dying and uh, some people will have this uh, social anxiety wherein you know you have to get on to the stage and have to talk to someone and all of that that is something that they would avoid 
all of these things again are treatable conditions there are medicines that will help you in reducing the anxiety that will help in reducing your phobia so that you'll be able to face your fears without you know being left out or you know you're not less than anyone when any one of us is having some is having some kind of a mental illness or some kind of a mental issue we start to think that you know everyone else is able to do that why am i not like everyone's life is good why mine is not i think that's a very uh, wrong notion that we believe in all of us suffer in silence nobody comes out and tells their pain uh, we only try to you know celebrate our wins but we don't really come out and tell our um, loss or our pains so i think that's where the issue comes because all of these things are treatable things with medication with uh, therapy all of these things can be cured so lifestyle of uh, bipolar disorders is so we need to see what is this precipitating event or the trigger that is causing this mood changes in that individual okay sometimes what happens uh, let's just say um uh, there's some crisis happening at work okay the person lost their job that individual who is susceptible to have a bipolar disorder and lost their job so after losing the job there's a lot of financial crisis there's a lot of uncertainty about the future all of these things might just put a lot of stress on that person and that will trigger the bipolar here so the person may either end up having a depressive episode or may end up having a manic episode so we need to kind of see what are the stressors and the triggers that are that are precipitating this event so the lifestyle change would be one to keeping your stress at bay kind of managing your triggers and not giving um uh, uh information um to them directly like you know kind of you know uh, sugar coating it or kind of you know uh, using a uh, you need to kind of filter out the information to them so that they don't end up having a proper episode so coping mechanisms i think yeah that's a very important thing we need to kind of make sure that they develop adequate coping mechanisms see again in men the coping coping mechanisms are very poor either they internalize or they constantly in denial or like you know they rationalize that this is what is happening it happened because that happened more like a logical approach yeah that's good it helps to a point but at sometimes you're bound to feel low you're found you're bound to feel moody you don't need an explanation for why you're feeling moody or low so i think the coping mechanism is something which we need to work with men especially you know making more awareness to self and sometimes you know they project all their insecurities onto the external world and they keep worrying about it so i think that's another thing which we we have to work with men so coping mechanisms creating the good coping mechanisms is another important thing while we are creating a good support system for them mm so why do men don't show concern and why don't they have any emotions and feelings okay so i think most of the women would agree with this uh, question um so the thing is it's not that they don't have emotions or feelings uh, you know what like i said their approach is more logical okay we as women are more emotional we think through the heart first they think through the brain okay for them everything is logic you go with them saying that this is a problem that i'm having um a woman would be more like an emotional thing kind of give an emotional advice whereas men are more logical so for them uh, that logical thing or more like a problem solving approach sometimes might make you feel that they are not concerned it's not that they are not concerned it's just that they are wired slightly differently they think slightly differently and the way they process information and emotions are slightly different that's why maybe they may come across as if they are not really emotional or they don't care about your emotions but that's not that's not true um also men uh i think you need to be more um, vocal about it like you know like we're saying we need to we need to start being more vocal emotionally open okay we've kind of created a fear for them or kind, uh, kind of you know they should be emotionally restrained because the moment they open emotionally and they start to be vulnerable we start to think that they are weak so these are the fears that kind of you know let them not being emotional not being vocal and open and that gives off an impression that they are not concerned but yeah to put it briefly men are more logical women are more emotional so eq that is emotional quotient is more for women when compared to men so that's the reason why they react differently to different situations uh 
uh, why do men find it hard to seek for mental health problems compared to women yeah so exactly Pooja, like the same thing we said they are wired differently okay so they always want a logical approach so if they're feeling low they would not want to sit and address their emotions like why am i feeling low or you know i am feeling low what can i do about it or i'm not feeling i'm not in a very great headspace what can i do about it okay so i just uh, give you an example so this person x okay there was something going on at the workplace not going very great um, so he started to feel this low energy not feeling great uh, not having interest and all of that he would come back home and prefer to kind of lie down all day not meeting anyone so see because his interest has come down instead of trying to address it he's trying to isolate himself he's just sitting at home not not going out his friends are calling him he's not picking up his calls um then this goes on for a day or a week or so and then he realizes it's not helping him so in order to dis- keep himself distracted he starts taking up new projects he starts taking up new work uh, uh, new projects at work and then he thinks that you know that's going to keep him occupied but eventually what happens he's not able to meet the demands of that project because he's not in a very good headspace his attention concentration is low so he's not his productivity is low uh, meet that outcome there and then he ends up failing the moment he fails he starts to think that you know i am worthless i am you. yeah i think there was a little bit of bad connection so yeah so you know uh, again that worsens his anxiety his so how to break the cycle is only by opening up so the moment you feel you're not okay i think we need to start doing something about it so i think uh, we are good we have done with all the questions great then thank you for listening i hope uh, there's some takeaways that you must have taken up from this session uh, hoping to see you all soon uh, in a good way and hope you people uh, will be able to implement some of the things that we discussed here bye bye take care